back. Uh, we're here prepping some Hornaday 308 brass and we're going to start by decapping with the uh, lead decapping guide. So thanks for joining me and hanging out for this video. Just uh, watch and enjoy and we'll go through the steps of reloading some 308. Alright, so now that we have all the brass decapped, we're going to start cleaning it with our Lyman Turbosonic cleaner. But first, we need to add some DI water. And there is a fill line in there, so we're going to go a little under the fill line. And we're going to add a little bit of the Turbosonic cleaning solution from Lyman. Should add about half an ounce to an ounce or so. A little squirt will do. And we're going to load it up, making sure all of it stays covered in the water. And that we stay below our fill line. Alright, I think that'll about do it right there. It's about half the batch anyways. And I have this set for 300 seconds. About 5 minutes, that's usually good enough. And we're going to start that. Alright. And while that's going, we're going to move on here. So I have a little wash station. We're going to fill that up with some DI water as well. That should be enough. And next to it, I have some old 9mm shell holders with perforated bottoms. And once it's done in the Sonic, I'm going to give it a rinse in the wash bucket there. And I'm going to place it upside down into the shell holders so they can air dry and get a good airflow through them. Alright, so when this is done, I'll get back with you guys and show you the steps. Alright, we're back and our five minutes are up, so we're going to get the brass out. get all the water out of the cases. And we'll give it a little rinse in the bath. And while we do that, we'll go ahead and get the next batch started here. down the line here. So we give these guys a good rinse and some fresh water. We'll get them onto a drying towel. And from the drying towel, we'll just make sure they're shaken out real good and get them into the shell holders. And they'll finish drying in the shell holders. And 
And I usually let them go for a few hours, make sure they're really dry inside. And we're out in the garage here, so shouldn't be a problem. We'll get some good airflow going. And once that's done, we'll get to reloading. And I'll see you guys back at the bench after these guys have dried out. Alright, and we're back. So here we are at the bench. The brass has had all afternoon to dry and get a suntan. Alright, we got the press, got our primers, we got our sizing die, our sizing checker, and we got our projectiles hanging out with our Beretta M9. We got our powder measure, and we got our book and our scale. So let's get to it. Now, with the sizing die, I'm going to show you all how to set it up. But before we do, for my purposes, I've removed the decapping pin. Since we already decapped all the brass, we don't need it. But if you've tumbled in like corn cob media, wal walnut media, if you've done any kind of tumbling, you're going to want to keep the decapping pin in there because I've seen them plug the flash hole. But for me, all my flash holes are clear since we did the spot A. So, here we go. We're going to run our ram all the way up, and then we're going to bring the die in. We're going to bring the die all the way down until it touches the ram. Alright, bring the ram down, give another quarter to a half turn, we're going to lock it in. So it's good and tight in there. You come in here and look. The shell holder is touching the die. So the brass is going to get all the way up in there. And this is for a full length sizing die, of course. So getting to it, on the Lee press, we're going to do a two step process here when we uh, size the die, or size the brass in the sizing die. I'm getting a little case loop on my hands. We're using the unique case loop from Hornady. Just a little coat. Get that on the brass. We don't want to get our brass stuck in the die. We're going to run it up. As we're coming down, we're going to prime. So with our clean hand, we're going to get a primer. Put it in the priming tool. And run it down the rest of the way. There we have it. Sized and primed, one step. Show you all that again. We're going to get the brass in, run it up to size it, bring it down. We're going to get our primer, put it in the priming tool. Nice solid push there. All right. One more. My hands are still nice and greased from the case loop, so we won't need to uh, do that again until your hand starts drying out. You literally just need enough so that the case doesn't get stuck up in there. Any more? And you can get bubbles on the case when you size it. Like if you have a clump of lube on there and you run it up into the sizing die, it's going to dent your brass. Or it's going to gum up your sizing die. So you take your pick on that one. So very minimal. And I'll show you guys here real quick. I have this nice little tool from Lyman. You insert your brass into it. And if it's flush or below the top there, and if this goes in all the way, then your brass is sized and doesn't need to be trimmed. It saves you an extra step from having to get the micrometer out and measure every piece. But for the record, we're at 
And this is all just once fired. I know the load that was fired in it. And it was brand new brass before that, fresh from Hornady. So I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to finish this up, get them all primed and sized, and I will get back to you guys in a minute. Alright, so we've successfully sized and primed and checked all the brass. Now it's time to chamfer the neck. So we're going to wipe off just a little bit of the case lube. doesn't need to be perfect. Case lube will end up lubing your barrel anyways. And we're just going to chamfer the necks just a little bit. Help those bullets slide in there just a bit. And the order here doesn't matter too much. Just chamfer a little bit. Wipe them off. You don't want to go too crazy with the chamfer, just get a nice little edge going there. And if you want, if you want to get fancy with it, you can chamfer the outside of the case too. But I don't really feel that's too important right now because we're going to end up crimping these. So it's going to end up folding it in on itself. So I'm going to go through, wipe and chamfer all these, and after that we will start loading powder. Alright, now that everything's been chamfered and wiped down, we're going to start loading powder. And I have a lead powder dispenser here that I've roughed in. And we're going to take some test samples from it before we start putting it into the case. And I give it a tap there every time to uniform the powder into the catch on the side. And I don't care how good or how expensive your powder dispenser might be. If it's like this style, you need to give it a good tap. Just to even out the powder, get it to line up in there. It adds to the consistency. And right now we're going to take five samples from it, get a good average, see what our spread is, make sure it's all within safe limits. We're going to start off there with a 42.2. And I already went ahead and zeroed the scale. And I would dispense this straight into the little tray on the scale, but when I do that it just goes everywhere. So we're using a little shot shell here. Forty-one four. Forty-two three. Forty-two seven. And my goal here was around 42.5. That was going to get us around 2,600 feet a second. And that's what I was hoping for. but anywhere from 40.4 to 42.6 according to the book should give us between 25 and 2600 feet a second and our max load 
for this is 44.9. That would be redlining it. So we're trying to stay, like I said, around that 42.5, and this is 42.8. Alright, I think we got a good thing going for us here. So we're going to start loading up the cases now. Like I said, just give it a little tap every time. It helps uniform the powder in the chute. And as you're doing this, you're going down the line, you can look in the cases here and see how uniform they're loaded. And just look right in the top and see where the powder comes up to there. As long as they're all relatively the same, you know you're doing okay. Obviously, if you have some coming up to the neck, up into the neck of the case, You've overcharged it, you have a problem there, you need to pour it out, weigh it. Or, if it's dramatically below what's in the rest of your cases here, which you assume are a good average, then you need to pour that back in and redo it. See what I did there? I almost double charged it. And if you're ever in doubt, I mean, there is nothing wrong with pouring a case out onto the scale. Just go ahead and double check yourself. And of course, make sure you get all the powder out of the case. Sometimes you'll get a chunk of powder stuck down there by the flash hole. So give it a couple extra good taps. And we're coming out to 42.6, and that's well within what I was hoping for. So we'll go ahead and pour that back into the case. It doesn't hurt to check that every dozen rounds or so, or whenever you feel comfortable. There's no reason to rush this step. There's no reason to take any chances with this step. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll start loading the projectiles. Alright, everybody's been filled with powder here and we're back at the reloading press. And we have an RCBS seating die. And this is a two purpose die. It seats and it crimps. So we're going to simplify things a little. We're going to have it do one thing at a time. Because I like the precision of it doing one thing at a time. And trying to balance two things at a time is just too much. So we're going to take a dummy case, empty, unloaded. We're going to run it up there, all the way. I'm going to bring the die down until we feel the crimp come in contact with it. And you'll know the crimp comes in contact with it because that's when the die wants to stop. And you see that my ring's high and the die's stopping there. So you know the case is coming into contact with the crimp. So we're going to spin it about half a turn 
off the crimp. And we're going to go ahead and lock it in right there at about half a turn before the crimp. That way the die won't go ahead and crimp the case. All right, we got it locked in now. And we're going to back out the seating portion of the die. Also, we're loading some Hornaday 150 grain interlock soft points. Just so y'all know. I'm hoping these will be great with hogs. We'll see once the quarantine's lifted. Get our dummy case out of there. And we will go ahead and get our priming tool out of there. Because we don't need that anymore. Alright, so we're going to run this up. And nothing should happen. Woo! Except it falls. Alright. So we're going to start bringing in the seating portion of the die. Give it a couple good turns. Hopefully we can start the seating process now. Still nothing. Alright, we're going to keep bringing it in. Oh, so you guys can see, that's a little top dial of the die here. Alright, we don't have it locked in. There is a locking nut once we find a good spot. But we don't have it locked in. We're spinning it down. Alright, I'm in contact with the bullet. This is in contact with the bullet right here. And you know it's in contact because it stops spinning. Alright, so we know we're there, we're touching, so we're going to go ahead and give it a couple turns. And don't worry about making a couple turns because this is a very fine measurement right here. These are very fine threads. And you can see, after three or four spins, we've barely started seating the bullet. But now we're going to start walking into it. We're going to try to walk into where the... Uh, can you where the bullet is? By the way, the cannula is that nice little ribbed part right there. And that's where we want it seated in the case. That'll give us our optimal crimp. Well, it's almost there. Man, I might need a screwdriver for this. Since we're so close, I'm only doing a half turn at a time now. Maybe even take that down to a quarter turn at a time, just to be safe. Or run it up. Mm, that is almost right on there. It is right on there. Alright, so now we get our micrometer and we're going to measure it. And the book says our overall length should be 2.735. Let's see where we're at. 2.75. Now that's okay, because the max length a 308 loaded can be is 2.8. So this will fit in a mag, this will seat in a rifle. It would be just fine, but let's give it just a little more. We'll see to the manufacturer's guidelines here, or at least attempt to, before we lock this in. Let's 
2.743. Hmm. You know what? This is right where I want it to be. On that cannular. I'm going to call that good. Also with these soft points, they deform really easy. That point deforms really easy because it's just bare lead there. So take the overall length with a grain of salt because you can crush this real easy and that will skew your measurement. So we're pushing uh, 2.7435 and we are going to go ahead and lock this in. Now you take this little nut on top and you just lock it down. That's all you need to do. Alright, let's push one more through and see what the length comes out to. Now obviously with Titan it we change this ever so slightly. Yeah, look at that. 2.738. And let's run this up one more time, the first one, just to see how much we changed it, if at all. Mm -hmm. 2.740. Oh. Alright, I'm going to call this good. We're going to start running them through. I'm to sit my butt down while I do this. And just like with the powder, doesn't hurt to check yourself every every couple rounds, every half dozen, every dozen, just to make sure your die is not coming loose. Make sure you're still getting the same results. All right, you see there, two point seven four four five. You need to know the sweet spot of your press too, because if you try over camming it like I can here, I can force that press to push another tenth of an inch or so. And we don't want to do that. And also while you're doing this, I know we put a little chamfer on the case. So it shouldn't peel any brass while we're loading it, while we're pushing the projectile in there. But you still want to give it nice, slow, even pressure. Because if you start going too fast, something's going to snag, you're going to bend your brass, you're going to peel your bullet. So just take this nice and easy. Nice even pressure. To me, precision is in repeatability. So if you can repeat the same steps, the same process, and get the same results, can have precision. Alright, 
let's check this out. 15th round here. Let's try and find the pinnacle of the lead. Like I said, that deforms pretty easily. Alright. 2.7355. Still within spec. All right, I'm going to knock all these out, and then we'll start talking about crimping. I'll see y'all in a minute. All right, we got everybody loaded up here. Now it's time to get started on the crimp. And what we're going to do for the crimp is we're going to start by backing out the seating portion of the die. Back them out about as far as you can there. And then we're going to loosen up the main body of the die. I <laughs> guess I had that a little tighter than I thought. All right. So we got the locking ring loosened. We got our spare piece of brass. And we're going to run it up. Okay, I just figured it out. So my problem was that spare piece of brass hasn't been sized yet. Therefore, the neck was enlarged. <laughs> so it was quite a ways under where we needed to be. So what I did was I just ran the brass up right now, or our loaded bullet up, and went ahead and spun down the die until it stopped. I guess we could have done this in the first place. So now we're here, we're stopped where it is. Now we can go ahead and do our quarter turn, lock it down, run it up. Let's check out the crimp. All right, and that's looking pretty good. We're actually starting to see a crimp there. All right, I'm going to do one more quarter turn. And that is a good crimp. All right, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp all these. And after I've crimped them, I'm going to put them in a marked bag for storage. That way I know what I've loaded up here because to be honest with you, I'll probably forget in about a week. Alright. And unless you plan on shooting these soon, I suggest you do the same. Mark your storage container somehow with the load that you've got in there. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope this video was informative. And if you liked it, tap that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I will see you all next time.